The other day, there were reports of pager explosions all across Lebanon, which has resulted in the deaths of at least nine people and thousands more being injured, many of whom are civilians with no connection to Hamas or Hezbollah. Details about the attack are still coming out, but the idea of sabotaging communications devices in order to make them explode and neutralize specific targets remotely is one that's been theorized for decades and even carried out in much smaller precision strikes. But the first thing you might be wondering about this is why are so many people still using pagers in 2024? And the simple answer to that is pagers are much harder to track than cell phones are. Pagers are a receive-only device. They don't communicate back and forth with cell towers, and they certainly don't produce as much metadata and location data as cell phones do. Cell phones have been used for years to gather targeting intelligence for drone and missile strikes, so a pager literally puts a smaller target on your back. And I'd also imagine that the batteries in these pagers last longer than phones with normal use, and they can't be used to goof off on TikTok and whatnot. Now, as far as making the pagers explode goes, at first there were a lot of people that thought this was just a cyber attack, and that's certainly possible for devices with lithium ion or lithium polymer batteries in them because lithium batteries are flammable and in some cases can explode. We all remember how the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 had to be recalled due to defects in the battery and the thermal voltage regulator that were connected to it. There's also been dozens of instances where e-bikes, hoverboards, and devices like that had catastrophic meltdowns that were so bad they burnt down entire houses. And earlier in the week, I was reading about a Tesla semi-truck that caught on fire and took over 50,000 gallons of water to extinguish and ended up shutting down Interstate 80 for about 16 hours due to the intensity of those giant lithium batteries melting down. And if the thermal and voltage regulators on these batteries are controlled by firmware with no hardware failsafe, they can definitely be hacked and set to fail at a specific time, which can cause all kinds of damage, especially if the battery fire is able to ignite other things like fuel or munitions. But lithium batteries, just like any other explosive material, create bigger booms when you have more of it. If we look at this video of a Note 7 having a catastrophic meltdown, you can see that while it is very startling and could easily cause some bad burns, it's not enough to maim or kill people like we've seen with the recent pager explosions. And even the massive batteries in e-bikes and EVs don't quite explode the same way as those pagers did either. A Note 7 might be deadly if someone had it right up to their ear when the battery exploded, and even then, it would have to explode really quickly and not just burn up like the smaller phone batteries typically do. And like I said at the start of this video, pagers don't require that much power compared to smartphones, and so they typically end up having much smaller lithium batteries that definitely aren't going to explode like we've seen, and that's assuming that they even use lithium batteries in the first place. One of the exploding pagers that was recovered appears to be a Gold Apollo AP900, which is typically powered by a single AAA alkaline battery, which is nowhere near as reactive as the lithium ion ones are. And even if the person with this particular pager happened to have one of those AAA lithium batteries inside of the pager, it still wouldn't contain enough energy to blow it apart like this here is upon failure. I'm no explosives expert. In fact, the only kind of explosive I'm really knowledgeable about is lithium ion batteries. And I can say for sure that that's not what is causing these explosions. If I had to guess, the Israeli government probably sabotaged the supply chain of these pagers that were going to Lebanon. Maybe they set up a cover company or just bought the company that were manufacturing the pagers. Apparently Gold Apollo, the company that originally designed this particular pager shown here, 
authorizes the use of their trademark to different manufacturers around the world. And then those pagers from the manufacturer might be bought up in bulk and resold by different vendors. So somewhere along the line, you could easily have people planting a small amount of military grade explosives into the devices and shipping them off to Lebanon. I've read some people saying that the explosions that we have footage of from Lebanon look similar to a couple of grams of C4 exploding. And I actually found a video on YouTube of people blowing up an iPhone with just a single gram of C4. And to my untrained eye, this explosion looks almost the same as what I've seen coming out of Lebanon. Of course, there's not quite as much shrapnel shown in this video because it's exploded outside of the phone instead of inside of the phone. At least I know that. Uh, but yeah, my bet would be that these pagers were sabotaged by having just as little as a pea size amount of high explosive planted in them and possibly rigged up to the battery in such a way that they would be able to detonate when a specific signal was sent to the pager. So now the real question is, just how indiscriminate is Israel willing to be with explosive pager attacks? Because if you follow the news about the conflict over there, you know that Israel doesn't really differentiate that much between armed combatants and civilians, but now that they're making people's pagers explode, it brings up a new question as far as what are the limits really? Like, would they detonate a pager if it's on a plane? Because that could easily cause the plane to go down with all the people that are on it. Uh, would they detonate a pager if someone is next to a gas pump when the gas station is busy or propane tanks. Is there any geofencing that's being applied so that they're only able to target pagers when they are physically within Lebanon or physically within specific zones that they suspect combatants are in? Uh, or if a compromised pager were to say make its way to London or New York because maybe its owner is visiting a friend that's hospitalized and on oxygen. Would that have blown up the pager then and set off the oxygen tanks and take out civilians that are outside of Lebanon in a totally different country? And today, news reports of walkie-talkies and solar equipment exploding in similar ways to the pagers have been reported across Lebanon. So seemingly, any electronic device over there could be booby-trapped. People might have to unironically start living like Ted Kaczynski, just as a form of survival, because a single gram of high explosive could be in anything that they own that has a battery, just waiting for a Mossad agent's detonation command. This is what happens when you're up against agencies that glow brighter than a million menorahs. Their enemies really don't stand a chance, and a lot of innocents are going to get hurt in the process. So yeah, don't use any electronics in Lebanon. Invest in the Anne Prim lifestyle, because when you're at war with Israel, anything could be a Note 7.